Hey everybody, I hope you guys are doing fine. I'm doing okay here. So a lot of us uh, might be off work, might be staying at home longer than we normally would, and we have things to do perhaps that we haven't had a chance to do, and now we have more time to do it. One of the things that I've been looking forward to doing, and I've been planning to do it, is an upgrade to my Afghan box camera. It's gone through several evolutions, and it uses a kind of a custom film format size, a little bit smaller than 4x5. And I wanted to uh, expand the print size to 4x6, because 4x6 is a standard frame and mat size that you can easily get frames and mats for in craft stores and places like that, home decor stores. Uh, I'm using the Fujinon 135F 5.6 lens. It does cover 4x6. The real challenge was the box itself. I didn't want to make a new box box. I wanted to be able to fit everything in the existing box. So one of the things I did is I dispensed with using a, a stop bath. I'm going strictly with developer and fixer. And then secondarily, in order to make the uh, enough room, I have like a half, I wanted a half inch margin around the edge of the print as it's in the tray so I can fit my fingers in there to pull them out. So it meant a making a five by seven size trays that have vertical sidewalls. So I soldered together a couple trays. Uh, out of uh, copper and some stained glass solder and uh, then I uh, had to make a whole new holder for the uh, 4x6 prints and a whole new ground glass assembly, new rods that it slides on and then today, that was like a couple weeks ago, then today I started working on the idea of one of the options for making prints will be doing contact printing inside the camera. Now the standard Afghan box camera uses typically an extension arm that fits out in front of the lens with an easel that you set the negative on and you do a close-up shot of the negative inside the camera you re-photograph the negative to make a positive. I've done that. I have the, the fixture and all that set up for it, but I was hoping I could, maybe I could do contact printing. So I needed a light source that I could flip up inside the box, behind, right behind the lens, and uh, that would fold out of the way, battery powered with a switch. It took me quite a bit of, of trial and error to make a working light source that flips up out of the way and, and evenly illuminates the uh, screen. Well, this is my little still life setting for testing out the Afghan box camera. Uh, it's general fluorescent lighting up here, but I have this video light and I'm using it and I have it set to the bluest setting, 5600 Kelvin. And so I've metered off of that with my light meter. I did an exposure of one second on the Fujinon lens at f5.6, which is wide open. So here is the focusing rod and but it's pretty sharp right about there. So these trays are made out of sheet copper. They're soldered together on the four corners. And then I've sprayed maybe five or six coats of clear varnish on both the inside and outside of each tray. I expect I'll probably get corrosion after time and I'll just have to repeatedly respray it to keep it clean. But I wanted a custom sized tray that fits right in between the frame of the box here and it gives me the ability to easily uh, lay down uh, four by six prints in here and, and give me enough room to, to get them out with my fingers. So that's that. I don't have too much spills going on actually. Um, I put a paper towel underneath it and it looks fairly clean actually. And surprisingly my developer uh, didn't get exhausted through backsplashing of the fixer. So I was really careful when I was pulling the paper out of the fixer not to splash things, just to take it out real carefully, let it drip over here and pull it out real carefully to avoid back splatter that would cause the basic pH to go acidic and therefore die. And uh, becoming ineffective. My paper is safe. I actually have one more sheet of paper in here. I don't want to open it up, but it's Velcroed, two strips of Velcro, Velcro to the bottom. I can remove this paper safe. It's made of cardboard and gaffer's tape, basically, and this part here just hinges up. You might be able to see that right here. This part hinges up like that, and it's Velcroed down so that I can operate it one-handed. 
uh, the, so I won't uh, have to fumble with trying to open the lid and having the whole box moving around as I'm doing that. So I wanted it to be uh, stuck to the bottom uh, in normal operation for one-handed use. Looks like it works pretty well. So for printing, contact printing, I will push the ground glass up like that, open up the view screen, and I'll have my dried negative. I'm going to put it face down, face toward the rear, and I'm going to set it in there and close it up like that. I'll open up my paper safe, pull out my piece of uh, print paper, set it off to the side here, emulsion side to the left, and then I will open up the view screen and I will make sure the print stays up like that. Then I'll put the print face, emulsion face up here and then push it close. And then I will extend it back to the contact printing position. And with my arm coming through the dark sleeve, I can actually push up against the view screen with my hand to make sure that there's good tight contact between the two pieces of paper. And I was using an exposure on this print of 10 seconds. So once the print exposure is made, I slide the screen forward again. I open up the screen. Sometimes the two pieces of paper will fall down by themselves to the bottom, but other times, like here, they don't, and you kind of have to push on them a little bit. And you have to remember that the first piece of paper that falls will be the print that needs to be developed. The second piece of paper, the negative, you don't want to reprocess it, so I'll pick the negative up, slip it off to the side here, and then I can take the print and start processing it in the developer tray. And while it's processing, I usually have a paper towel in my arm sleeve, which is in here. I'll dry my fingers briefly, and then I'll push the ground glass back up like this, and just so it doesn't get close to the developer here. And then I can finish processing. So just a little bit of detail about this contact printing light source. So this is a cobble together pieces of wood. And there is a screw down here that it pivots on. So it pivots down so it's out of the way of the lens when you're taking a picture. And it folds up like that. OK, on this assembly of pieces of wood, I have there's a half round groove cut in the top of this piece of wood and this flashlight bulb incandescent bulb nestles itself in that little groove. It is secured in place with this strap of thin brass. It, the brass is screwed down to the wood in three places. Uh, on the other end of it is where I have the solder connection, making a connection to the wire. And then the back terminal of the light bulb, I have a thicker piece of copper screwed to the back of the wood. There is a metal spring that is soldered to that copper and then a disc of copper soldered to the front of the spring and that makes contact with the light bulb like a spring connection. So this piece of copper has a wire soldered to it also. Those wires come over to the switch up here and to this set of double triple uh, A batteries. So that is the circuit. Now I discovered after I put it in here that this incandescent light bulb, this clear bulb, was not putting out an even distribution of light. It was making like streaks or whatnot on the view screen. So I had to make a little plastic ground glass view screen. This little piece of uh, plastic I had to grind down this side. So when the light hits it, it diffuses it. It makes an even illumination onto the uh, contact printing thing. So I don't have any artifacts from the light source itself. And now there is a hard stop right here, this screw, that uh, when you flip the contact printing assembly up, it stops there and it puts it in position. Switch. And that is the contact printing light source. You can see the backlit negative there. Uh, my first usable uh, negative was this one, and uh, it was one second exposure at f5.6. I think I only developed it for maybe two minutes, and so I wanted to do a little bit more developing, uh, a little bit darker shadows, and also uh, the next negative, I turned on the fluorescent light fixture behind the figure here on my workbench, so I get, got a little more of uh, detail. So this is the 
good negative, the one I like. I did a couple test prints. I didn't know, uh, first of all, even how to meter for my light source. It was just trial and error. And of course, the distance that you draw the view screen back it, that's you're increasing the distance between that, that and the light source. So you have to have a kind of a standard distance. I found that where I insert my arm in the middle of the box, the first couple printing sessions it was a little bit further up toward the front and I couldn't hardly get my hand through around that to get to the light source to flip the light source up. So then the next trial I pushed it back a little bit further which ended up being about nine and a half inches, put my clip on the focusing rod to hold it there, and then I was able to easily get my hand around and maneuver it. It's a little tricky when you're playing with a negative and with the print paper. One of the times when I tried printing, what happened was when I was loading the two sheets, what happened was the paper negative had actually came down when the view screen opened and I ended up putting the print paper in front of it <laughs> and uh, that didn't work too well. That was a, a blown attempt. But anyways, once I figured out the mechanics of how to work with this system and how to feel for the paper and everything, then it was pretty straightforward. Once you've finished this exposure, this contact printing exposure, you got both of these pieces of paper folded down. I take the negative, which I know is the top one, I again put it back on the left side of the camera for safety out of the way of the chemicals and then the print I can then start processing in the tray right there. I think I did three minutes. I was using LPD paper developer diluted one to two maybe. Three minutes in the developer, two minutes in the fixer. Well I'm pretty happy actually about the initial results. A 10 second contact print from this negative. The negative itself was one second under this lighting here. So how do I like the results? Well, first of all, looking at the negative, well, this scene was shot on my workbench, and of course it's a vertical format, portrait format camera, so my cabinets that are above the workbench are the area that's unexposed, otherwise it would be completely lit, but there's just no light on those cabinets, so I'm kind of shooting into the workbench area, the back wall is illuminated, and I had a video light on the subject here, so otherwise the entire negative would be uh, exposed. And then as far, and actually it was a pretty good exposure, I thought. Um, the focus was probably best on this arm right here, extending out. And so the contact print, once I got the right exposure value, um, it's okay. I think it's not as sharp as optically printing because even though I'm pushing the plastic view screen up against the film gate and trying to keep these two sandwiched together. There's nothing really holding the center of the image. It's, the print is just being held, you can see, by the thin border. So there's a little bit of bowing that happens, especially with the paper. The RC paper tends to bow toward the emulsion side, so the back side of the negative was kind of bowing outwards, so you don't get as good of a contact there. So that's just part of the problem or the process. And, you know, I I could probably go to the trouble of maybe trying to make a new thing that has a piece of glass in front and it just gets it would get really complicated because this thing has to serve two purposes it has to serve the purpose of shooting the paper negative like a camera but also for contact printing so it's an experiment and if I am unhappy with the sharpness of it I can always go back to the front easel method of, of shooting the negative but overall I really actually do like the tones it's a little soft but you know what for a portrait maybe Maybe that's not so bad, I don't know. It's not large format crisp, let's say. There's a little softness to it, but it's kind of very pleasing, and I like this semi-matte finish on the print. So there you have it. First light, first results from the 4x6 conversion of my Afghan box camera. It'll be fun to work with this and see if there's any modifications or changes I want to work with in the future. And if I do that, I'll let you guys know, hey, drop a note down below if you would, if you're interested, if you have any questions, concerns. I know there's a number of viewers out there that are also working with Afghan box cameras, and I'd really love to hear from you guys. And, of course, stay well, stay healthy, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.